be thy exalted almighty God. Lord, this evening, as my brothers ahead of me have said, let your fire please fall in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, wherever you find a proper amen, open their voice to be able to do better and give better testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let there be no distraction, O God, and let your presence and your spirit take absolute control. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we have prayed. Come on, shout a better amen. Um, I would like to please appreciate our father and our mother in the Lord, the leadership of RCCG. Please, if you are celebrating, help me celebrate for this opportunity for us in the Pastor Seed family that is nonstop. Thank you, thank you for taking care of the future, ensuring the future is there and guiding us and leading us in every single way. Um, as it is custom, thank you to the PSF choir as well. Please do not go so far. I need the angelic support and the voices. As it's custom to, to us in our fellowship, there is something we do based off Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. If you do not mind just standing just for a few seconds, shake those legs like Pastor Peter Makina would say, and then wiggle a little bit so that some of that fiery blood would move around. Touch your head and speak to your head. Say, my head. Remember, it is your own head. It's no one else's head. Say, my head. You would not lose your crown. That which is yours, you would not miss. Touch your eyes. Say, my eyes. You will not go dim. Your light would forever shine. Pull your hairs in case you are the stubborn kind. Say, my hair, whatever is yours this evening, you would hear it loud and clear. Touch your mouth. Say, my mouth. From now on, everything you say would work out for good. Touch your heart. Say, my heart, you will not be broken again. You will not receive bad news. Touch your tummy. Say, my tummy. Ah, you will never go hungry. And for those who need the fruit of the womb, you would be fruitful. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please celebrate God Almighty if you believe that as you take your seat. Coming after my brothers that I've gone this evening is a daunting task, but my own assignment is simple. The time that my brother did not finish on the last one, I would add it to my own because he had 15 minutes extra. But please, let's celebrate God in the life of that young man coming all the way from the north. The difference between power and authority, that is what I am, you know, after hearing the first four people, you would have to rewrite and rewrite your sermon over and over and over again, but thank God for grace. The difference between power and authority during one of the Let's Go Fishings, our Father in the Lord took myself, my beloved PD, and we went on a Let's Go Fishing with Daddy Gio. And while we were there, a police officer stopped us. That's one of the reasons why I'm wearing this uniform this evening. A police officer stopped us, and we stopped. And while he was interrogating us, and we were sharing tracks to him, at the end of the journey, he asked... After I've received this tract, will I also receive menu, menu? Because man shall not live by tracts alone. While we were there, one of his colleagues was on the other side of the road. There was this trailer that was coming with full speed. And he stretched out his hands towards the trailer. As the trailer came closer and closer and he was not reducing his speed, he understood something. We were in the southwestern part of Nigeria, as Yoruba would say, Kigbogbara, Mabarogun, Abib, Balochinso. Yes, that's it. I was just testing you to know that you know what I'm saying. He decided to jump out of the way and jumped into the bush. When he got back up, he looked at us. All of us looked at each other. We smiled and laughed. 
that thank God that you understood that while you have the authority, that trailer was coming with full force power. So one out to bow for the other. I pray that your enemies will jump out of your way after this Holy Ghost service. Come on, that amen is asleep. So very quickly, when authority fails, you need power. When authority fails, you need power. The police officer is allowed to arrest any criminal as long as he or she is also backing that arrest with firepower, like an AK-47, a P-90, or a SIG SOA. And of course, on authority, Matthew 28, verse 18, Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. On power, Moses, in a song of deliverance, said in Exodus chapter 15, verse 6, Exodus chapter 15, verse 6, it says, Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemies in pieces. Your enemies will be dashed into pieces in the mighty name of Jesus. Please say that amen if you believe it. In Psalm 62, verse 11, Psalm 62, verse 11, the psalmist said, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that all powers belong to God. Just in case there is someone here that is having difficulties hearing, the reason why he said twice I've heard it is because both ears are working. If you are in this house today and you know you have a challenge with your hearing, just toil those two ears. God has spoken once, twice you will hear it today in the mighty name of Jesus. As a child of God, you have authority. You have authority to use the name of Jesus, but you also need that power. Hence why we're talking about the rod of power that enforces that authority every single time you need it. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. It says, Behold, I have given unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. I don't know if somebody wants to jump up right now and demonstrate that by treading, treading on whatever it is that has been disturbing you. Go ahead and tread on whatever it is that has been disturbing you because he has given you power to tread over them. Tread over them, tread over them significantly. Whatever you do here by faith will be manifesting in the physical. Whatever you do in the spiritual here will be manifesting in the physical. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus said to them that you must tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Luke chapter 29 verse 49. Luke chapter 29 verse 49. The purpose of this power is for you and I to witness. Some of us received visas and we were given the opportunity to leave our green pastures to one that might appear as a greener one. Please do not mistake the fact that you were allowed to japa as you just going there for no reason. It is for you to go ahead and witness across the world. To go ahead and witness across the world. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, as my brother already quoted a few times, make this clear. That the power that is given to you is for you to be a witness across the world. Across the world. From that story that I told you, when that man was stopping us, he used the authority on his left hand. But then you need that power that comes from the rod on the right hand. So we are going to do a bit of demonstration tonight as my time is almost up, so at every time that the devil and his agents throw an arrow towards you, you would catch it with your left hand, and then in that same way, you would grab it with the right hand and send it back to sender. Okay, you have with me? So when the enemy throws an arrow of sickness, you would grab it with the left hand, and of course, you, after telling it to stop, you will then send it back to sender with the right hand. And the, every other thing that the enemy might throw, rejection, emotional issues, mental issues, psychological issues, sapa, barrenness, whatever the name might be, once they send it, you will tell it stop. 
and then you would grab it, transfer it, and send it back to sender. But I need to warn you, because the Bible makes it clear that who would ascend unto the hill of the Lord? It says, it is he who has clean hands and a pure heart. The truth is this. Everything that you do in this life, you will need the use of your hands. So you have to look at those hands and speak to them that, Father, please cleanse my hands. Cleanse my hands, cleanse my hands. Because the only reason why you can hold the rod of fire, like my brothers have said ahead of me, is if you are fire yourself, if your hands are clean yourself. So therefore, if you are ready, jump up on your feet, jump up on your feet. I have two minutes, jump up on your feet, jump up on your feet. Because our declarations this evening, we will then back it up with speaking in tongues once we are done. Are you ready? That yes is not able to even scare the enemy. Are you ready? So when the enemy sends the arrow of sorrow towards you, you will tell him, stop. And then back to sender. When the enemy sends the arrow of poverty towards you, you will tell him, and back to sender. When the enemy sends the arrow of rejection towards you, and then back to sender. He sends the arrow of barrenness, you will say, he sends the arrow of death into your family, you will say, it sends the arrow of lack into your situation, you will say. With that in your mind, find your neighbor because we're going to back it up with speaking in tongues right now. Where that my brother left up, we will back it up with speaking in tongues in the Holy Spirit. That everything that the enemy can send my way, I am using my authority and I'm using my power to send it back to sender. Go ahead and speak in the Holy Ghost. And if you have not been baptized yet in the Holy Spirit, open up your heart and open up your mind and receive that baptism of the Holy Spirit here today. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. If you see someone else already speaking in tongues, grab their own hands and catch that fire. Please pray, pray, pray like your life depends on it. 